Well, here we go. I have been getting some comments on my Instagram. Where is it? About how I've been making these bubbly textures right here recently. Uh, so I thought I would take you through how I do that uh, with Octane Render, Octane Material, and Cinema 4D. So let's make a sphere. This will be our bubble. Turn off Render Perfect. Segments to 48. Icosahedron. I'll turn on the line so you can see how we're doing. And let me click up here, add a displacer, put that under the sphere, uh, change the height to 40 centimeters, and the shading to a noise. We can see displacer is affected it there. And let's turn this global scale right up to 1000. And maybe this Y scale to 200. So now we get this blobby kind of bubbly shape that, you know, if it was a medium sized bubble, you might get this uh, blobby looking shape. If it's a really small bubble, it would stick closer to a sphere. And if it was a huge bubble, you know, you have much more elongation and distortion. So we'll just stick for, you know, the purposes of this tutorial to this size and see how we go with that. Maybe let's change the global scale to 1200, a little bit more rounded and spherical. Cool. So that's going to be our blobby shape, our bubble. And we can turn it off and on to suit us. So let's put a background plane in, change the orientation to minus Z move it really far back I'm going to say 1400 in the Z or the Z looking good and uh, let's drop a camera uh, sorry I won't use my shortcuts I will open up Octane um, change this to Octane Render let's make it 720 by 720 square um, let's change this to path tracing just 512 so it's quite quick GI clamp to 4 great we should if I click this we should get nothing because it's got no lighting in here and that's all good but let me put a camera in so objects octane camera and then I'll zero out select the camera I'll zero out all these values zero 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 and the Z let's put that to minus 800 so everyone can follow along the same distances yeah so now if I select look through the camera I've got that of course still got no lighting but let me grab the plane and just scale it right up so it's at least filling up the background I'll select this F for focus click on my object um, sorry click on my object uh, click on my object that I can't see in there let me just get some lighting in there first so I won't go the shortcuts I'll go HDR HDRI environment and select this image texture here I want to load in uh, an image and just go to Google and I just searched free HDRI outdoors and you get loads that you can use I use something like this one here so I'm going to go find 
that one uh, no now we've got some lighting now I can choose my focus select my object and the focus plane goes to where I clicked great Okay, now let me go closer to my object. Actually, I didn't. Let me just stick to minus 800. What I want to do is change the focal length of my camera. So instead of being 36 millimeters wide, let's make it 80 mil portrait. Sweet. So now change it back to a sphere got some lighting, got the model for our bubble. Let me save that. Let me put a, sorry, I used the shortcut again, uh, materials, octane diffuse material. Double click on that. I'm just gonna change this to black. Drag that to my background and just call it BG for background. Maybe rename it down here as well. So this is a nice starting point. So I'm going to show you a really basic, simple uh, bubble shader, and then a much more complex one. So the simple one would be materials, specular. I'll drag it to my sphere so we can see boom, glass, then node editor, choose fall off, connect that fall off to film width, then select the fall off, change the mode to vector 180 degree, and then we can play around with these but um, you know, here you can see already we're getting this sort of refractive, dispersive bubble type of look. And that's pretty much it. Depending on our scene and where the background is, if I drag this background closer, you know, you can see how it's affecting that specular look but that's just a really let me change that to six again just so it's back to the defaults but then you know it gets affected by what's around it and if I turn on this displacer again you know we've got a nice looking bubbly blob and you might be happy with that that's it that's that's really the basic version nothing more than that but I will take you through a more complex uh, shader and depending on what you're doing you know that might look just fine might look better I'll take you through something that might look worse uh, but depending on which circumstances it might turn out better as well so let me take that shader off and start the complex bubble shader So I want to start off with a, I've just got my shortcuts up here, I'm gonna use these, but a, um, a glossy material, you can get it through materials, octane glossy material. I'm going to double click. And this is going to be my um, noise. So I'll call it noise. and I'm going to go to the node editor and funnily enough I'll drag in a noise I'm going to connect it to the diffuse so we can see what's happening it might also help if I drag that material to the sphere so you can see the noise happening there uh, I want to change these settings to turbulence octave of 1 quite big, 
maybe omega of 0.7 And then change the projection. Projection, drag that there. I want this projection XYZ to UVW. Okay, so we're projecting a bit better. Now I want a bit this noise much bigger than that. So let's change these settings. I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and make it five so it nice and big okay so that's our noise I'm going to add something new now I'm going to build a sine wave let me just drag it to the diffuse so we can see what's happening with that too so I don't want to sign uh, let me yeah I'm going to I want a saw wave I want to also change the projection on this to the same XYZ UVW. I'm going to make the rotation minus 90. I'll lock this aspect ratio, change the scale to 2, and the Y position to 1. So we've got like a gradient. So, uh, sine wave wave that will go uh, up and down sort of like a gradient in and out like a wave uh, what you can also do is don't, it's not necessary I'm not going to use it really in this but I'll just show you you can drag in a gradient make the input so change this sine wave to go through the gradient and later on if you decided you want to add color like colored bubble and color to this sine wave you can do that I am not going to add color so I'll just undo that but we can see this sine wave you know affecting it now and what we're going to do is mix both of those together just save that um, so I want a mix um, Where's mix? Mix. So I put that texture in there and that texture in there. I'll connect it to the diffuse so we can see what's happening. So now we've mixed both of those together. Let me see the amount. Do I want to change that amount? Maybe. Let me change that to 0.4 just so the noise is a little bit stronger okay so that's just so we can see what we're doing but really what we want is actually I'll drag this to film width and the film width we can see is starting to affect with those sort of color dispersions throughout there so I don't really want it on the diffuse um, so now what I want to do, now that I've got that texture happening in the film width, I want to change this pretty much to like a, a totally reflective ball. So if I go to my index, change it to one, it will change it into a mirror ball, like it will reflect everything. So now it's really you know, showing this reflective chrome uh, noise wave through that we've got going on. So that's the start. Next. So I'll save that. Uh, cool. So next I just want to create um, another glossy material and I just want this like a totally reflective material. So I want the opacity to 0.5 and index to 1. And what I'm going to do is mix, uh, let me show you what that looks like. I'll just drag it on there. So it's pretty much like a semi transparent uh, reflective material. And I want to mix those together too. So let's put my noise on top. 
and I'll just call this Chrome. It's not really Chrome, but I'm just going to call it that so it has a different name. And I'll drag that to the material so we can see what's happening there. I'm going to go my node editor. It's pretty messy, actually. Let me just go to the float. Make this point seven, say. So the reflection is still there, but the uh, that noisy gradient showing through. Cool. So next, I want to just make a transparent object. So the specular, double click, opacity, zero. So that's pretty much nothing. Um, and then I want to make another mix object. So into this mix object, I'm going to put my see-through object and the other mix that I just created mixing the previous two. Let me call, call this noise mix. So have I done that? Double, double click. Yeah, just didn't update the, the the name noise mix, all good. So what, this is going to be really messy. Um, so if I can find this mix material in here, there's an octane mix, yeah. I can see that the amount is just in a float. And let me drag this mix that we're working on onto the object so we can see. So I don't want this just to be a float. I want to mix everything I've put together now like we did with the basic version into a fall off map. And that's it. Uh, you can change these settings around to suit. I usually maybe make this point zero two and we can leave that at six, but you know, depending on what our scene is, let's just leave it at six. And that's it. That is uh, so now we've got this sort of oily detergent looking um, surrounding to our bubble. I turn back on the placer to you know, if we had a fairly large bubble that we've blown, it might look something like that. Um, and we just want to adjust the shader dependent on the size of our object. So if I go back into the original noise one that we made, and I say, well, instead of a scale of five. Uh, let's make it a scale of twelve. So it's increased the size of that, and that might be a little bit more um, to our liking if it's a smaller size bubble. And once again, the displacement. And because we've got the displacer on that's hooked to some animation so if I put say 0.2 animation speed into that displacer let me get a bit more frames in here drag this out press play you can see how it's moving the bubbly blob to have some undulation And that's it guys that is my bubble shader and because it's a bubble it's just reflective and dispersive 
the look is very much determined by uh, what's being reflected, its surroundings. So if I grab a different HDRI, um, let's say this bright snow-capped mountain, it has a much different effect on it. Or if I grab sort of these night laser scene, yeah, that looks very nice and different too. Um, if I grab this sort of basic gradient sky, it gives me that. If I turn off the background, uh, you can see it blends through. So let me get a different background again, just to show some variation. What else have I got? Mm, this might not work, but let's try it. Yep, so you can see background is pretty low quality, but if we put a background image in the back there, you can see how that would come through and the edges would still be dispersing like a bubble. Um, or if I wanted to drop in uh, a studio rig, which I made before, we can see what it looks like with some lights and a background to it. And I've got a separate tutorial on how to make that basic studio uh, rig if you'd like to. So that is it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And let me know. Cheers. See ya.